someone starting out wanting to be a prop master, that if you want to do it in New York, then you should do it in New York. The logistics of moving things around in New York is a huge skill that they don't teach you in school, that you just need to know how to do to do this job successfully. Um, and I think you really learn by doing in, in this position. I don't think it's something that you can really be taught. There's no real definition of what makes a good props person to me, except your personality. Because there is no way that you know anything about what you're gonna do tomorrow, and no one walks around knowing what objects from the medical industry from 1931 necessarily look like. So it's about being resourceful rather than being an expert in something. You know, I can build furniture and I can weld and I can sew, but I don't necessarily do those things every time that's what's needed for a show. More than likely, I'm tracking down good people who do that for a living to try to utilize their talents and put the whole package together. Everything that comes on the stage that's touched by an actor is what I give them. So everything needs to be spot on. It also needs to be strong because they, they break them all the time. They, it's, I, I try to make it toddler proof when I'm dealing with actors because they break it. All, like Some things I could weld it, they could break it. <laughs> currently working on The King and I at Lincoln Center. There are 51 people in the play and all of them are holding something. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff. When you begin a musical, the first step is to build a mock-up of everything they're gonna come in contact with in the space so that they can study with it in the rehearsal room and work with it and dance on it and push it and wear it until you get to the stage where you're given the real objects. I prefer to work with mock-ups so that we can figure out what the final product needs to be simply by criticizing the first mock-up that I make. That looks good, it's not hitting your neck, right? Yeah. All right, so good. I'm gonna give you a super strong man cape right now. Oh, nice. There we go. Doesn't cut you too much. I could Ditch it right to the basket so it stays tight. Now let me see that photo again. Hold on a second. I like to buy as much online as I possibly can because shopping is like truly a skill and a lot of people aren't good at it. I, I'm, I'm good at it, but I need to be in charge of a lot of things and so I, I don't always need to be out shopping. So I do a lot of like eBay, Etsy, all the online auction places. Um, I Amazon everything I possibly can. In New York City, transportation is hard, so if you can buy something from Amazon that can get delivered to your rehearsal space for free, then you do that. I, I go to lots of great antique places, the furniture market in Queens. There are certain places that just have all kinds of things, and that's a shop that just has all kinds of things. You can buy tiny little knickknacks to dress a shelf, and you can also find huge armoires. Right now, working on the Heidi Chronicles, and we're looking for, there are like three different record players in the show, and they're all different time periods. I need to find the period correct record players, and they need to turn on stage. They don't need to make sound because we'll fake the speakers and hide them somewhere. But they just need to, to turn and, uh, you know, with old electronics, it's just hard to find things that are reliable. In the audience, most of the play takes place at Buckingham Palace, and we have a big chandelier, uh, and I need to find some red velvet to match some costumes that's gonna make be a sock on the top of the chandelier that hides the, the chain. I need to match some velvets. I'm like making this um, 
I made this great pillow. It's for the Queen of England. She has keeps her crown on it. And uh, uh, Helen Mirren playing the Queen. Um, but I can't take it out of rehearsal. I just want to swatch some velvets okay. to see something that like kind of matches. Like a burgundy. It's like a burgundy, but it's got like a little bit of Merlot in it. I think this is pretty good. Beautiful. That pattern's kind of cool. Is it a pattern? Oh, that one on the top? Yeah, it's like... Oh yeah, okay, that's like that one. Oh, good letter. But that's pretty cool. I always put my hand in the picture so you know what it looks like next to people's skin. I often work on lots of shows at one time and you have to be efficient and really well organized and that if you aren't organized and like really on top of your stuff that whirlwinds can come over you and you really have to stay on top of when notes come in every day and um, deadlines. I always number these instead of just taking a picture because on cell phones they'll if you send it from like an iPhone 4 to like a 5 or a 5 to a 6, sometimes they flip the photo and then you'll send it to someone and they'll say, I want the second one from the third, but they have flipped the, they have flipped the photo and then you buy the wrong thing and everything is ruined. disciplines of of what I do it it's special effects it's um, upholstering it's stylizing and set dressing you know what make the lettuce like perfectly around this whole platter is this all the lettuce we have no we have more I just don't I don't know if we want to like cut off the bulky part or no I think it's good okay this is more like realistic yeah they're gonna have their wonderful lunch spread of pulled pork sandwiches with a little gherkin pickle stuck in them. And then they're gonna have the champagne. They pop a champagne every day. So along with this food comes like all these dietary restrictions that the actors give us. So we, we have to, like instead of the, using ginger ale, we have to use seltzer water, but then color it and then get the cork in there. And then it has to be easy enough for the actor just to like pop on cue so that he gets the sound right when they need it. by myself, but I have, I outsource a lot of work. I often hire assistants on a show by show basis, but like I'm a freelancer and this is, um, it's just me. For, for new people and young people to be interested in the props field, I often tell them that I don't even want to see um, their resume or really their photos of their work. I just want to find out what they know about the props field and if they like problem solving, because it really is about that. It's about the lack of fear to not know what the heck you're doing until you're starting. <laughs> and it's um, organizing chaos. It's herding cats and you have to just know that it's okay if everything changes at three o'clock. Um, 
you just have to adapt. The changing of minds, if you cannot deal with that and staying flexible, there's no place for you here because we're making things better and making discoveries along the way. So, you know, like this is the sofa we already have in rehearsal. Mm -hmm. I think you want something a lot more like light and colorful yeah. because the rest of the play is a concert on stage and there's a lot of black. And the yeah. only moments in this play that actually provide some life are these little tiny vignettes with furniture in them. Okay. So even though we love this for the era because it's 70s, yeah. I still think it should have like a pattern on it yeah. and be like yellow and gold and olive or something. The show is modern day. It's so much easier than a, like a period piece because we can just run down to Bed Bath & Beyond or any store in the city and grab it and go. But when it's a period piece, there's research involved. And it's making sure that the piece was there at the time of the play. It's antique shopping and a play set in like 1980 is a, is a period play. And period plays are always more expensive than modern day plays. We're given a number sometimes. Sometimes we're not even given a number and we, we budget every item that's on the list that's given to us by the set designer by the director, they work together. And, and so we keep our budget, we're like hopefully, we try to research the best we can to get those numbers right. And, and there's always moments where it's like, well that wasn't in the budget. <laughs> I, can, I can do a 20% discount on this. Is that the best? It's just mm. a little high for us. 300. <clears throat> that will be the best. Where's Herb? Where is he? Yeah. He's at an auction at the moment. Oh. Do you want me to call him? Yeah. So right now it's 440. And I just got him down. 300. Let's see if we can get him down more. 285. That is his best. Did he know it was me? Yeah. I just wanted, yeah, the theatre lady. He says, yeah, the one that's never got any money. <laughs> oh! <laughs> when I started, we just had, uh, you know, a Polaroid and no cell phone. Um, so you had a meeting, and then two weeks later, you had another meeting, and you might have brought some stuff with you to show people. And then you go away, and you do your stuff, and then two weeks later, you're there for tech. Nowadays, you get a call or a text or an email every six and a half seconds with new information, different information, um, bigger information, better information, and you need to stay connected. It slows you down, and if you let it, it will kill you. I have no idea how anyone did my job before the internet existed. None. I don't know. It was hard. <laughs> it's still hard, but it must have been really hard. Often at the end of a show, all of our pieces are owned by the production. Often they're stored in, for future productions. Uh, regional theaters will rent furniture and props from, from old Broadway shows, or they'll get stored for national tour. Oftentimes, if they're things that we just need to get rid of because there's not storage space and they're not keeping them, uh, I'll have donate them to non-for-profits like the public or MTC. But I mean, a lot of stuff gets thrown away. That's not going to sound good, but that's the truth. <laughs> like, a, a lot of things get thrown away. 
I always try to recycle, reuse. I always try to buy used. I try to donate. Sometimes it's hard, I'm noticing, because I'll have products and props that we're creating, but not out of like the best materials to break down in the environment. So I'm, all, I'm constantly trying my hardest to, to be green. At my company, at PropStar, we um, pretty much keep everything that is not rotting or unsafe <laughs> tucked wherever we can tuck it to reuse it. And I can't imagine what it would be like to start from scratch every single time. We recycle things and recycle them and recycle them and recycle them. The props that usually become my favorites, no matter how much pain they cause me uh, on the road to figuring them out, are usually the ones that um, make people laugh. I did a show called The Real Thing that had a house of cards on a coffee table and another character enters stage slams the door, and the door slam is supposed to, to uh, cause the house of cards to fall without anyone touching it. Consistently, every night, first moment of the play. Um, I lived in fear for two and a half weeks <laughs> that I could not get this thing to work. We finally got it to work with an extremely simple mechanical trick, and it is, you know, I'd say one out of every 45 shows, it maybe didn't work. Um, but to me, that was pretty good odds. When I won the OB for props, it was for a play called Bug. And I was so excited because no prop person had ever won an OB before, let alone any award ever. <laughs> I think I might have won the OB for that because it just felt so real of which that's one of the things that I love about creating these the set dressing for like these really naturalistic plays. It's just like you can go deep and and go into like the psychological things behind each and every object and how they're placed and where they're placed. And it was just phenomenal just to be a part of a really great collaboration. What's most challenging at working at this level is um, producing the kind of quality, style, and good taste that is, you know, in demand. Um, I've gotten to work with some of the best people in the industry, uh, and, you know, no one ever stops and says, ah, that's okay, let's just go with it. I mean, you really need to keep trying to make it better every second you have left before the curtain goes up. I think my favorite parts of doing props is when everything's up on stage and I can see like all the colors and everything working. Everything is placed properly and everything like makes sense to the character and really meets my goal of enhancing the set design. I love working with, I think, the smartest people in my field. It's invigorating when you're in a room and you look on stage and you look around you and you think these are the best people in the world at what they do and, and I get to be part of that.